All right, good morning, everyone. So today, you know, we've been talking a little bit about escrows um, and <clears throat> how they go about. And I, well, you know, you as the agent probably have some of the most vested interest in making sure that deal goes through. So part of that is understanding who the other players in the escrow are, you know, what vendors are going to be needed, but also making sure that you have them as part of your team, people that you can recommend, multiple people, because you, know, you don't want to just give one recommendation to an inspector, but typically two or three that um, for any type of inspections, things like that, any kind of recommendation that you're giving to a client, you want to give two or three of. But ultimately, here's how I look at it, and here's how I did with my escrows, especially when, back in the day when we were doing real estate auctions, we actually had to, at any given point in time, we had two, 300 escrows. So because of that, we had to get extremely efficient on how we did things. And the way it was originally explained to me by one of my mentors was that, you know, think of yourself as a wheel, okay? And the, or the escrow as a wheel and you as the hub of the wheel, okay? Each one of the spokes are all the vendors that are doing work, whether it's the escrow company, the title company, the inspectors, um, the lender, the attorneys, they're all spokes. So. The idea though is that you as the hub are talking to all these folks while they may not be talking to the others. So what you wanna do is make sure that, you know, the very first thing I always tell my, the people on the team I'm working with is that if there is any indication of any sort of problem, I wanna be the very first person that you call. Because I may have already talked to, you know, if it's a lending issue, I may have already talked to, um, the buyer, or if it's a, you know, perhaps it's an environmental issue on the lending side, I may have already talked to the environmental company. I know, may already know the answer and be able to solve it a lot quicker before it becomes a bigger problem. If I know what everyone is doing and where they are, even talking to the attorneys. So with that in mind, I always tell the, my team that I don't wanna hear from you unless there's a problem. But if there is a problem, I want to be the very first person you call. So that way I'm fully aware. And that way you can also give feedback to your client, exactly what's going on and where and what the next steps are going to be. So, you know, always have that team in place. Now, the team members that you're looking at, who are and what would you consider a team member? Any, anybody that can affect the deal? The lender? Absolutely. Lenders, the escrow company? The title company, more importantly, not just the title company, but the title officer, okay? Um, so meaning you should have a, you know, depending on the title company, because a lot of times, are, you know, you, you're not gonna always get the title company, but you should know which are the best title officers to review the title and work with you to make sure that the title's clean. Um, so each title company has different title officers that specialize in different things some do just commercial some do residential but you're going to want to know who those people are in addition to that you also now have attorneys okay you have both the buyer's attorney and the seller's attorney okay now obviously you're not if you're not representing one side you can't recommend attorneys to that other side they're going to have their own but you want to at least reach out to them, talk to them and say, you know, if there are any issues, any problems, if you need any help, come to me. OK, talk to me. Let me know what's going on so I can at least maybe get it. You know, perhaps they're not having uh, there, there's an issue going back and forth with the attorneys and one attorney's not your your buyer's attorney. If you're representing the buyer is not responding to the uh, seller's attorney. Well, part of your job is to keep making sure that everything is moving along as easily and as quickly as possible. So it may need, you may need to help coordinate those conversations. Or um, in, in some cases, instead of going back and forth with uh, emails, with red lines, it may be quicker just to do a quick phone call. And you as the agent may know that a little bit more because you already have insight into the what your buyer or your client's looking to negotiate. So there may be some hard points that are non-negotiable, but there are also more than likely some soft points where they can give up on that don't really matter as much. So instead of going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, a lot of times it's expedited by just having a phone call. No one's gonna know that except perhaps you because you're talking to both sides, okay? In addition to that, your inspectors. Okay, there are different 
there are all different types of inspectors. You have your uh, basic general inspection, but then you also have your specialist inspectors such as uh, your plumbers, your HVAC, your electrician, your structural engineers. All those you should have a team set in place, multiple people that you can refer out to your client, but really an inspector's job is to inspect the property and to find issues with the property. Okay. Um, one, there, there are two different types of inspectors out there. There's one that wants to earn their keep, so to speak, or make it look like they are uh, earning their money. And they'll point out every little thing that may be wrong, even if it's not an issue. Um, this could scare away a potential buyer. So, you know, your inspectors really, it should be weighed, you know, where, yes, that this, uh, Building may not be to today's code, but when it was built, it was at the current code and it's sufficient and satisfactory. You know, something like that, as opposed to an inspector that is a little bit more alarming, may just say something like, The property's not to code. Okay, that doesn't give any color into what he's trying to say or he or she is trying to say or convey to the client. All it does is scare the client. So really you have to go in and have an inspector that's gonna not just point out the issues, but also explain them a little bit more. Okay, the other type of inspectors you have, which are pretty straightforward, um, are going to be your surveyors and your environmental inspectors for your phase one. And lastly, your uh, perhaps a PZR um, specialist uh, property zoning report that is gonna take a look into the property itself. Now, with those reports, it's not so much of, you know, those reports are generally just facts. And it's not so much of a, you know, explanation as it is facts and timing. Most importantly for those reports are typically timing. Okay. So you want to make sure that you have vendors that can accommodate your timing. So if you're, if you work with them and you're very, close to them and you're giving them a lot of business, they may be able to expedite a report for you quicker for your client. This is why you want to have a team member that you're going to be committed to and you're loyal to and same goes back to you. So with that in mind, when it comes to those type of vendors as well, have a stable of them that you can work with and you can get going very quickly and move forward for your escrow period so that nothing comes up and it's all of a sudden a shock or you're too late or you missed your due diligence time frame and they kick you out of the deal because remember a seller does not have to extend the due diligence time frame they can cancel on the buyer if the buyer does not uh, approve the due diligence in the appropriate time frame and if that ends up happening, and they, they, there's various reasons. They may have a better offer. They may have an all cash offer. They may just have cold feet or seller's remorse. The idea though is not that give often. them that opportunity. Is that often? Yeah, it's often. I wouldn't say it's necessarily often, but it does happen, um, especially in up markets. And sometimes when it's a really good investment, a lot of times say seller selling it will have second thoughts like, well, what am I gonna replace it with? And you know, should I have sold it? This has been so good for my family for the last 10, 15 years. So it does happen, okay? Just like buyer's remorse does happen. Um, so the idea though is that with your team members hitting all the time frames, you're minimizing any chances of anything going wrong. Okay, so really it's just having a coordinated team. Typically what I try and do also is have a weekly meeting with those team members. And weekly meeting meaning uh, a weekly quick conference call it may not have to be everybody involved, but you know the initial stages. You're going to want to make sure that you have escrow title, um, the client's attorney on board, um, just to review the items and see what may be coming up that may be issues and who's going to take care of it, and more importantly, when is it going to be taken care of, so you can follow up with them to make sure that they have taken care of the issue and that it's correct and that we're all moving on time. You know, so. That is really what we talk about when we say have a team in place. Okay. Other team members that you can have down the road or, or maybe not as essential, could be maybe a cost segregation analyst. Um, this is somebody who can take a look at the property and tell, give a, uh, a expedited depreciation schedule um, doing a cost segregation analysis. 
So certain types of clients that may be beneficial to, so you can introduce them to that. It's an added benefit, but it's not necessary for the escrow period itself. Um, other types, uh, you know, you're, we get recommended referrals from a lot of uh, buyers and sellers, but primarily buyers for CPAs that specialize in commercial investment properties that understand the, you know, the regulations with that. Um, attorneys we talked about already, and that's really about all you really need to have for your team members. You know, it's what is happening where and making sure that everything is going as smoothly as possible. So you're coordinating this whole dance with all these different vendors to make sure that you have a time frame to hit, whether it's 20 days, 21 days, 30 days and close shortly thereafter. OK, so any questions on that? The cost segregation analysis. Uh -huh. That's identifying all the aspects of the property that can be depreciated over a certain uh, given amount of time. Right. If you remember from the depreciation class that we uh, gave that should be up online as well, um, cost segregation is a company that will come out and they will actually segregate all the costs associated with the building as far as the expenses, meaning they'll break down what does it cost to replace a light fixture or a electrical outlet or the flooring or the roof and then estimate that lifespan of that pro of that particular item and then depreciate it out over that lifespan so you know typically you'd have a 39 year lifespan or depreciation schedule for a straight line depreciation of commercial real estate a cost segregation analyst will give you a or give the cpa a uh, expedited uh, depreciation schedule. They'll work in hand in hand with them as well to make sure that there's basis in case there's an exchange involved. So, yeah. Anything else? No? All right. 